Bristol Myers, the makers of Sal Hepatica for the smile of health, and Vitalis for well groomed hair, present The Alan Young Show. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ken Delmar speaking on behalf of those two old friends, Sal Hepatica and Vitalis, and welcoming you to the Alan Young Show, featuring our singing star, Diane Courtney, the music of Peter Van Steeden, and starring Alan Young. <laughs> and here's the street that Alan Young lives on. This first house in the block has a two-door garage, and the house is called La Repose. The next house has a three-door garage, and it's called The Retreat. And here is Alan Young's house. It has a 12-door garage, and it's called Auto Camp Number 7. <laughs> well, let's go in. Well, hello, Kenny. Come on in. Oh, thanks, Alan. Uh, ah, it's nice to get inside. It's so cold today. Yeah, I'll say. I had an awful time lighting the furnace, though. You did? Yeah, I stuffed some paper in the furnace, lit a match, the whole thing blew up. It blew up? Yeah, there must have been a big clinker in the little stinker. <laughs> Kenny, I, I hope you wiped your feet on my new doormat before you came in. Oh, yes, Alan. That's a lovely new mat you have. Oh, thanks, Ken. And you're so different from everybody else in the block. Huh? They've all got welcome written on theirs. You have hotel ambassador. <laughs> well, one night as I was leaving there, it stuck to my foot. <laughs> I needed a doormat because there's so much work to keeping this place clean, you know. Yeah, can't you get a maid? Well, I had one for two days, but she was too independent. She wouldn't help me with the dishes. <laughs> Honestly, uh, uh... <laughs> what did you say? I, uh... <laughs> Made a career out of that line, didn't I? <laughs> oh, ruined one. Honestly, washing, polishing, answering the phone, it keeps you busy all the time. Oh, there goes again. Excuse me, Kenny, will you? Hello? Hello, is this the wrong number? <laughs> Why, yes. Oh, I do it every time. Yeah, you see what I mean, Kenny? Well, you need a maid in this house. Look at how careless you are. You haven't even taken down the mistletoe from Christmas. Well, I, I left that up on purpose. I've been trying to kiss my girlfriend, Betty, ever since Christmas, but I can't get up the nerve. Gee, I've been puckered up so long, I look like I'm perpetually wetting a thread. <laughs> Betty's coming over here now, and when she walks in and stands on that mistletoe, boy, will she be surprised. Uh, oh, hey, maybe that's Betty now. Oh, boy, this is going to be great. As soon as Betty opens that door, I'll throw my arms around her and kiss her. Yeah, but, Alan, what if she won't let you kiss her? Won't let me? But she's got to, Kenny. If she doesn't let me kiss her, I'll, I'll go drown myself in Central Park Lake. Alan, the lake is frozen. Okay, I'll go skating. <laughs> you know? Watch this, Ken. Watch how surprised Betty is. Come in. Here I go. <laughs> <sighs> What do you think of that? Fine, Mr. Young, but you can't consider this an engagement. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it isn't David Dittenpfeffer, I could have told by the bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> Come in, David boy. Well, hello, David. Hiya, Mr. Delmar. Uh, Mr. Young thought you were his girlfriend, Betty. He hasn't gone out with many girls, has he? <laughs> well, you spoiled what might have been a wonderful kiss for him. He kind of cramped my style, too. Look, well, anyway, I'm glad to see you, David. Did you wipe your muddy little feet on my great big doormat? Yeah, I wipe my feet all right. But you haven't got a big doormat anymore. You've got six little ones. Six little ones? Well, how's that? I forgot to take off my ice skates. <laughs> ice skating? You should be at school today, David. You play hooky altogether too much. What do you do when you play hooky? Well, in the morning I go to the pool room, and in the afternoon I sneak into the burlesque show. <laughs> oh, David, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Wasting your mornings like that. <laughs> well, I don't care. I think anybody who enjoys going to school is a dope. Oh, I don't know, David. Mr. Young enjoyed going to school. See what I mean? <laughs> nah. In fact, I'll never forget how excited I was the day I graduated to grade four. 
Were you nervous? Nervous? I was shaking so much I could hardly shave. (laughs) You see, David, you should show more aggressiveness in your schooling. You should show more interest. You bet you. (laughs) Oh, you just. Why, when I I was your age, I was... Thank you. When I was your age... (laughs) When I was your age, I was twice as old as you are. classroom is clever, Mr. Young. In fact, yesterday, we invented human jet propulsion. You invented human jet propulsion? Yeah. You see, you wire a chair with 50,000 volts of electricity. Why, that's marvelous. How does it work? I don't know. We're waiting for the teacher to sit down and we'll find out. (laughs) Well... (laughs) If you don't mind my saying so, Alan, David should have gone to school today. You see, I'm secretary of the Open School Week Association, and this is Parents' Week at our school. That's when all the fathers and mothers go to school with the children. Well, my father can't take me. He don't feel so good. He don't? Well, maybe your father just thinks he feels sick, eh, can he? Maybe he's one of these hypo... hypo... Uh, hypopotamus? Hyp... no. <laughs> Kenny, that's not a very nice thing to call David's father a hippopotamus. You should know better. My mother thinks my dad is a hippopotamus. That's impossible. She says he sits down so much that his hippos are big enough. All right. And so is his potamus. Okay. (laughs) And that's no way for a family to talk. A family is a wonderful thing, especially if everybody is related. (laughs) David, do you know something? I've got a good mind. I've got a mind. I've got half a mind to take you to school myself. No, you can't take me to school, Mr. Young. You see, my parents... Now, you go upstairs and get cleaned up. Mr. Delmar will wash your face. Come on, David. I'll get you ready. Okay, stop pushing goggles. (laughs) We'll be back in a minute, Alan. All right, Kenny. Take your time. (laughs) I have to get ready myself. I don't want to be late for school. Ah, school. I used to love chemistry. I was so skinny that professor used to let me help him out all the time. Why not? I was the only kid in the class who could tread water in a test tube. (laughs) Gee, look at the time. I got ten minutes to get there. I better hurry because... Well, that must be Betty. Mistletoe's still up there. I'll kiss her this time. Here goes. Hiya, Betty. Hello there. Oh, hello there. I'm your next-door neighbor, son. Huh? I ain't got my calendar from the bank yet. Thought I'd drop over and see what day it is. <laughs> well, you, you could borrow my calendar, but the figures on it are pretty small. Hmm? That's okay, son. I was going to get me one of them Esquire calendars. Hmm? Boy, there's figures for you. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm in a bit of a hurry. I, uh... I was reading where they tried to stop Esquire from going through the mails. Yes? Well, I suppose... I'll bet they couldn't stop the mails from going through Esquire. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I just thought I'd drop over. (laughs) That's, uh... Nice of you to drop over. I'm the friendly type. That's the way to be. (laughs) Yep. Speak up. Yeah, talk out. Yep. Yep. Hello! Hello there! <laughs> Look, I, uh, I have to be getting along to school now. I, I was at a school dance in Mexico once. Mm-hmm. I tried to pick up a little Spanish, but a brother come along. <laughs> yeah, well, um... I had a wonderful dance. I learned how to do the rumble. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the rumba? The rumble is a back seat that's always shaking. You dance your way and I'll dance mine. <laughs> Well, I'll get a calendar somewhere, son. Hello? So long! So long! (laughs) Well, Kenny, Kenny, are you ready yet? Uh, Yeah, Alan, all set. And here's David. How does he look? Yeah, Mr. Young, how do I look? Mm -hmm. Well, Kenny, David looks very nice, all except his hair. It's all over the place. Looks like you combed it with an egg beater. Well, I'm sorry, Alan, but that's the best I could do. You know, you haven't any vitalis. But when I take them to school like that, what'll I tell the teachers? Tell them the same thing I tell everybody. And that is? 
that we're sorry you can't get Vitalis anymore to help keep your hair well-groomed. We civilians must do without so the servicemen can get it. And get it and use it they do. Because Army Post Exchanges and ship stores sell all the Vitalis Bristol Myers is allowed to produce. The boys want it, you see, because Vitalis is great for loosening a tight, dry scalp. Salt spray and hot sun makes the scalp dry. And the Vitalis 60-second workout helps bring it back to normal again by stimulating circulation. And so helps prevent excessive falling hair. And that's why we civilians can't get Vitalis. Wartime shortages have made it impossible for Bristol Myers to fill both the civilian and servicemen demand. So all Vitalis made is going to the armed forces. As naturally, the boys come first. Now here's our glamorous singing star, Diane Courtney, sing, Let's Take the Long Way Home. Let's take the long way home. Let's look for the long way home. And on the way, let's pretend that this wonderful night won't end. Through Asia would be much too soon. Once around the moon, our dream boat will carry us across the foam. Let's take the long way home. Shall we fly through the night? Shall we dream as we go? See the star on your right. See the farm down below. It appears only takes a million years If you're in the mood to roam Then let's take the long way home Lovely here in school, David, walking along these ancient halls, rubbing shoulders with these old faces. But, Mr. Young, I don't think you should have brought me today. My mother said... Nonsense, David. Your mother and father aren't feeling well. This is open school week. Is there anything wrong with my bringing you? (laughs) After all, what do I look like? Some sort of idiot? You mean from where I'm standing? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, bless your little... Now, come on, David. <laughs> Into the principal's office and let me do all the talking. Ah, good day. You are the principal, I presume? I am, and you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Mr. Mr. Fokelbeek, I left this school in 1936, and this is the first time I've ever been back. Well, did you bring a note? <laughs> You, you don't understand. I'm Alan Young. Not Alan Young in the flesh. Well, I never went to school without it. <laughs> Today I'm taking little David Dittenfepper around the school. Oh, that's just fine. Just go anywhere you like. This is an old, old building, and many famous people went to this school, including President Roosevelt. Oh, any other presidents? Well, it isn't that old. <laughs> oh. Well, thanks, Mr. Fogelbeek. I'll, I'll see you later, hey? Ah, now, David, let's walk through the school and see the different rooms, shall we? Mr. Young, I still think you shouldn't have brought me. Nonsense. All the children have their parents with them. Why, the corridor's crowded with parents. Oops. 
Oh, I, I beg your pardon. Well, that's all right. It was entirely... I say it was entirely my fault. Uh, yes. Well, Counselor Carton Branch, I didn't expect to find you here. Yeah, I'm just down seeing my little boy's teacher. Hmm? Lovely woman, intelligent. She's a short girl with a beautiful memory. Is that so? Yeah, of course, I prefer a beautiful girl with a short memory. <laughs> Pay attention, that's a gag That's song. a gag. <laughs> Well, let me be the first to deny it. But, uh, Counselor, I should imagine a lawyer like you would be very busy these days. Right? Oh, yeah. I just finished my biggest case. Case, that is. I see, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was for a famous radio personality. What was the case? I was the attorney who got the divorce for John's other wife. Oh, oh but you should... Pay attention there, boy. <laughs> I see, you should see my courtroom technique. Huh? I remember one case I was on. I walked into court, the judge wasn't there, the defendant wasn't there, the jury wasn't there. Well, what did you do? Don't be abstract, son. <clears throat> I acted out the whole case. I put myself on the stand. I asked myself, where were you on the night of January the 12th? Then I jumped off the stand and objected. Then I jumped up on the judge's bench and I sustained my objection. Then I hopped into the jury box to take a vote. What happened? You know where I can get a good lawyer. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sorry you lost. Oh, nothing at all, nothing at all. Well, I'll have to be getting along now. Oh, by the way, have you ever met my son? He's a boy, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't believe I have. Well, Jonathan, Jonathan, I want you to meet Mr. Young. How do you do, Jonathan? How do you do, Mr. Young? I'm very pleased. I say I'm very pleased. <laughs> Thank you. Well, come on, son. I say, come on, son. Goodbye, Mr. Young. He's a nice boy. So long, counselor. <laughs> oh, my. Now, where did David get to? Oh, there he is. David, boy, where are you going? Well, I think I should be going home, Mr. Young. But, David, I'm here to take you around the school. Now, let's just see what this first class is studying. I'll open the door here. <clears throat> Gallia est omnes de visa in potes pork chops. <laughs> Et alisque literis bacon. Quod erat demonstradum ham. <laughs> Pig Latin. <laughs> let's try this next room, shall we, David? And so we commence the study of the Neolithic period, which is the New Stone Age. Oh, this looks interesting, David. Let's stand quietly at the side of the room here. Okay, but I still think you shouldn't have... Bought... Quiet, David. Quiet, the teacher. Uh, this followed the Paleolithic period of the Cro-Magnon Man or Caveman. You see, this is history. This is history, David. The Paleolithic Man. It's, it's P-A-L-E... P-A-L-E... This is history, David. <laughs> Mr. Young. Oh, yes, indeed, by Jingle. Yes. Uh, as I was saying before we were interrupted... See, David, somebody interrupted the teacher. <laughs> you mustn't do that, kiddies. <laughs> Don't interrupt the teacher. Uh, <laughs> I, uh... Naughty, naughty! <laughs> I, uh, I beg your pardon, sir, but would you mind being quiet? A man of your mentality should have a low voice, too. <laughs> Now, just a minute. I happen to be Alan Young. Oh, not the Alan Young. Yes. Who attended this school in 1932? Yes. Who graduated in 1936? Yes. I've been looking for you. You failed in history! <laughs> now sit down with the rest of those kids. Yeah, but I've got to... Sit down! You... Now I'm going to continue with the history lesson. Now you be quiet. You old bat. <laughs> what did you say? What did you hear? I, uh, I heard something about a bat. Well, are you still going out on those? <laughs> Young, I don't want to hear another word from you. But I'm supposed to take... One more you. word from you and you stand in the corner. Now, as I was saying, students... I'm just going to have to leave the room. Quiet. <laughs> in studying the different phases of this subject... a glass of water, it's all... Quiet, please. <laughs> uh, one finds many changes in I the I want a little glass of water. That's all he wants. <laughs> Will you be Quiet. Now, as I was saying... <laughs> I got a glass of water if I have to tap my knee. <laughs> All right. All right, Young. 
Get a glass of water, only please leave this classroom immediately. I am leaving immediately. And Young, if you ever happen to be arrested for anything, just plead imbecility. I think you'll be able to prove it. <laughs> this is altogether too late for compliments. <laughs> Guess I told him. <laughs> Kicked out of my own classroom. Left alone in my own school. I've had enough. I'm leaving this place. I'm through, I tell you. I'm through. You... Hmm. What's this next room? Home economics. Gee, look who's in there all by herself. My girlfriend, Betty. Guess I'll go in. Hello, Betty. Hello, Mr. Young. Are you looking around the school? Yeah. Gee, Betty, will you ever forget when you were a child? Yeah. Me too. <laughs> what, are, what are you doing here, Betty? Oh, I'm helping to teach the cooking to the children. Huh? After all, Mr. Young, you know the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Uh-huh. Is that trip really necessary? <laughs> I just made this soup for you, Mr. Young. Huh? And look what the noodles spill out. I love you. Oh, gee. I never knew Campbell's cared. <laughs> but I, I'm not much of a lover, Betty. I'd rather go hunting and fishing than go around with girls. Why? Well, when you put it that way, it does seem kind of silly, doesn't it? Mr. Young, you're so sophisticated. Uh, I'll bet you know all about life. Oh, yeah. I know how the birds and the bees carry the pollen from flower to flower. You do? Sure. I even tried it. <laughs> Believe me, Betty, there's nothing to get excited about. Mr. Young? Hmm? Do you, uh, uh, do you think that maybe someday we'll get married? Well, Betty, I, I sure hope so. Oh, do you really, Mr. Young? Yeah. Then I'll always have somebody to play pool with. <laughs> oh, Mr. Young, you're impossible. <laughs> Goodbye. Hm. I wish Betty wouldn't stand so close to me and put her arms around me like that. I got an apple for the teacher in my pocket and she baked it. <laughs> Oh, well. Oh, Alan, there you are. Oh, yes, what is it, Kenny? Say, what was wrong with Betty? I just passed her, and she looked a little upset. Oh, she said something that I didn't like, so she got mad. But I'll I'll make her feel good. I'll drink all this soup she made, and I'll eat all that cake she has over there. But, boy, am I going to hate myself in the morning. Oh, no, you won't. Not if you wake up tomorrow morning feeling sick and headachy due to the need of a laxative. Just take a glass full of sparkling sal hepatica. For sal hepatica taken then brings quick, gentle relief. Usually within an hour. That means you don't have to risk feeling miserable all day, waiting until night to take a laxative. You take sal hepatica the minute you need it. And besides getting quick, gentle relief, sal hepatica gives you another advantage. This famous saline helps sweeten an upset stomach by helping to reduce excess gastric acidity. So get a bottle of sal hepatica from your druggist, remembering this caution use only as directed. Then whenever you need a laxative... See how much faster you feel better when you take a glass full of sparkling Sal Hepatica. Say, Alan, will you do me a favor? Certainly, Kenny. What is it? Well, you know, I'm secretary of the Open School Week Association, mm -hmm. and I'm supposed to be taking care of the class next door today. But I just got a call to go down to my drugstore right away. Could you take over the class till I get back? Oh, sure. I'd be pleased to, Kenny. Sure. Now, let me see. The class Kenny wants me to teach should be down here somewhere. Well, here we are, 4B. Well, the children will be all waiting for me, so I may as well go in. <clears throat> All right, all right, right. Here comes the teacher, all right. Here comes the teacher, kids. Ready, ready. All right, thank you, children. Now, please take your seats. Now, let's get acquainted, shall we? My name is Alan Young. That's very easy to remember, kiddies. Alan, as in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And Young, as in Youngstown, Ohio. Now, what is my name? Allentown, Pennsylvania, Youngstown, Ohio. <laughs> 
And uh, what do you want to be when you grow up, Sonny? A bum like you. Ah, <laughs> uh, 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 now. Speak nice to the bum. Or the teacher. <laughs> now, are there any questions? Uh, yeah, I got one, Mr. Ohio. It's, it's Youngstown. Or Young. Young. What is the question? What is the question? Uh, when you went to this school, what did the student body consist of? Why, Betty Grable. Betty Grable? Well, you couldn't ask for a student with a better body than that. <laughs> well, now, the first thing we'll study today is French. French is very important, you know. Now, who would like to converse with me in French? Uh, I would. All right, Willie. Stand up. Ow! Serves you right for jumping up when you're underneath the desk. <laughs> now, Willie, what are you studying to be? Uh, an architect. An architect, I see. <laughs> and why, why do you want to be an architect? Well, I want to make square spitballs out of round ones. <laughs> okay, well, let, let's study French, shall we? Now, we'll talk in French, and you answer me in French, okay? Je suis pauvre. Oui. Yeah. Uh, Voulez-vous ouvrir la fenêtre? Oui. <laughs> Voulez-vous fermer la porte? Oui. <laughs> Uh, il est dix heures moins dix. Oui. I bet you run out before I do. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's leave French to the French, shall we? Now, the next thing we've got to do... Johnny Brown to teacher. Johnny Brown to teacher. Teacher to Johnny Brown. I am receiving you loud and clear. Request permission to leave room. Permission granted. Roger! <laughs> and now, now, children, we are going to have our geography lesson. And for this, I'm going to have some slides projected on the wall so that you'll be able to see the country we visit while I lecture about it. Will some boy please turn off the lights? There we are. Uh, the lights are out, teacher. It's pitch dark. Yeah. <laughs> some boy in the class is older than he says he is. <laughs> Now, today, we are going to study Africa. Africa is bounded on the north by the Mediterranean, on the south by the Cape of Good Hope, and on the east by Frank Buck. <laughs> now, may we have the first slide, please? That's, that click, the first slide. Yeah, Johnny, you've got the slide upside down. Oh, don't bother to change it. We'll all stand in our heads. <laughs> are we on our heads? Here. Yeah. Now, here we are, deep in the heart of the jungle, looking at a typical African village. The natives of this village are called meals. The fat ones are known as fat meals, and the thin ones are known as slim meals. In the, in the center of the picture, we see two natives standing, talking to each other, and in our mind's eye, we can hear them conversing in their native dialect. One man might say to the other, Ugga, mugga, dugga, hugga. Lugga, hugga, lugga, tugga. So long, Mo. So long, Joe. <laughs> Next slide, please. Now, in this picture, we see a group of African women. They are wearing nothing but... Next slide, please. <laughs> now, now it is time to leave the little African village, so we go down to the shore and walk out on the slip to board the sloop, where we meet our pop on the poop. <laughs> Isn't that a pip? <laughs> That's all. Lights, please. Now, class, I have a very big question to ask you all about this geography. And here is the question. <clears throat> Leaving the prime meridian at two degrees of latitude, being a 360th part, and allowing for the rotation and elliptical path, what is the determined geographical position of longitude? <gasps> now, will all those who don't understand the question please take two steps forward? <laughs> Nobody else but me? <laughs> well, now we'll have to get... Oh, there you are, Young. I've been looking for you. Oh, it's the principal again. How do you do? 
got little David Dittenfeather with you. Well, come into the class, David. I was going to take the whole class outside. Stay where you are, young. You aren't going anywhere. This class isn't going anywhere. This whole school isn't going anywhere. Thanks to you and David Dittenfeather. I don't understand. I simply brought David to school because his parents wouldn't bring him. That's what I've been trying to tell you, Mr. Young. My parents wouldn't bring me to school because I've got the measles. What? Oh, no! No! no. <laughs> Good night. Thank you. Hey, Diane, be my secretary and take a letter, will you? Then get off my lap, Kenny, and let me sit on yours for a change. Oh, oh, all right, sure. Now, this letter will go to women everywhere. Women everywhere. Dear ladies, want to help keep those hands of yours soft and lovely? Well, then get wise to Truche, the beforehand lotion. Truche will really help keep your hands soft and lovely, even though you have a lot of soap and water tasks. You smooth Truche on before you get to work. And Truche's beforehand protection helps guard your hands from the rough, drying effects of the hot, soapy water. So if you want to help keep your hands softer, smoother, lovelier, begin today to use Truche. T-R-U-S-H-A-Y, Truche. <laughs> All it, folks, stay tuned to this station, for here comes the new Gracie Field show starring Gracie Field with that funny man Fred Brady immediately following station identification. This is the Blue Network.